So hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So I'm doing my March book haul today. I've got a fair amount of books. I mean, I don't think I've got as many books as last time, so in my February book haul. But I feel like I'm collecting so many books each month that I need monthly book hauls. So let's get started on the books that I picked up in March. I'm sure you'll have seen around YouTube that Penguin have released 80 classics, short classics, to celebrate their 80th birthday. So I thought I would pick up some of their 80p classics and I ended up getting like six of them. Yeah, I have issues. So I'll tell you the six that I picked up. I got Thomas Hardy's Woman Much Missed. I believe he wrote this about his wife. Um, so his wife died and I think he wrote poems about it. I think they're poems, yeah. Um, so I'm probably going to be reading this one first because I haven't read Thomas Hardy since A-level where I read Tess the D'Urbervilles and absolutely loved it. That's one of my favourite novels. So I know already that I love Hardy, so I can't wait to get into this one. The next one is something quite different, and it is Virgil's O Cruel Alexis. Virgil is an ancient Roman author. I think he's a poet. I think these are poems. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to read this. I've not read many Roman works at all, so I'm trying to get into classics a lot more, so I really can't wait for this one. The next one of mine I picked up, even though I've read it so many times, I did my dissertation on this poet, and it is John Keats' The Eve of St Agnes. Now this is a collection of quite a lot of his famous poetry. Um, Keats is my favourite poet of all time. I did my university dissertation on him. I have studied him for ages and yeah, I still come back to his poetry and enjoy it. So when I saw that Keats was one of the little black classics, I immediately picked it up because I am the biggest Keatsian ever. I just adore his poetry and The Eve of St Agnes is probably one of my favourites. It was one of the first poems that I came across of his, so it kind of has some really good memories for me. The next little black classic is Emily Bronte's The Night is Darkening Round Me. I have no idea what this is about. It's apparently her most passionate, powerful poems on death, nature's beauty, and the passage of time. Now, that sounds amazing. Emily Bronte, of course, wrote Wuthering Heights, another one of my favourite novels of all time. So I really can't wait to read this because I didn't realise she wrote poetry also. So I've never read any of these poems before, so I can't wait to just delve in and get myself lost in Bronte's incredible writing. The fifth classic that I bought was Sophocles Antigone. Now this is an ancient Greek tragedy and it's probably one of the most well-known, I would say, ancient Greek tragedies. Um, Sophocles is a really, really famous writer and I've not actually read anything by him. And the final black classic I got was Jane Austen's The Beautiful Cassandra. Now, Jane Austen is my queen, essentially. She is just, I think I've spoken about this in many a video, but Jane Austen is my ultimate favourite writer. Like, apart from Keats, who is my favourite poet, Jane Austen is my favourite novelist. I have read every single novel she has written, apart from this one. So literally, this is probably the only Austen work that I haven't read yet. I think this is just going to be really, really funny and witty, as Jane Austen's novels usually are. This is only a short, early short story um, that she wrote while she was young, in her teenage years. So I can't wait to get into this one too, and I'll let you guys know what I think of them. I could do a big Penguin Classics review if you think that would be a good idea, if you would watch that. I'm always happy to talk about classics. One of my earliest videos was actually my top 10 favourite classics of all time. So if you would like to see an updated version of that, I can definitely do that. The next book that I've got to show you, I actually received last week. And I bumped into the lovely Lena, who is Just Kiss My Frog here on YouTube. And she gave me this book called The Time In Between by Nancy Tucker. This is Nancy Tucker's memoir of having anorexia and bulimia. And this is about her experiences, how she swung from anorexia towards the other side to bulimia and how she paved the road to recovery. But it's also about the highs and lows of someone's mind when they are literally in the throes of an eating disorder. Now, this is a topic that I find really, really interesting, and I've already started reading this. I'm about halfway through, and can I just say, this is written so beautifully. Like, you would not believe that it just doesn't read like a memoir, it reads like a work of fiction, and it's just a really, really moving story. And Nancy really tells it with such humour and insight, and it's just a really, really special book to read. And if it sounds like your thing, 
I would definitely pick it up. But even if you don't read non-fiction, I would recommend it anyway because it reads so beautifully. It flows like fiction. And I just feel that it's a really, really important book to read. So yeah, thank you, Lena, for giving me this kindly out of your backpack. And I can't wait to finish it. And hopefully I'm going to be doing a review of this too. The next book is a review copy that I received from Hodder and it is Beatrice and Benedict by Marina Fiorato. Now, if you know Shakespeare at all, you probably recognise the title. This is about Beatrice and Benedict from Much Ado About Nothing. So in Much Ado About Nothing, these two characters have a background, even though we don't get to explore it inside the play, but the play kind of hints towards these two characters having a very troubled past, and there's basically history behind these two characters that the audience doesn't necessarily see, because the play obviously starts a lot later and is centred around the main character, Hero. But these two characters have finally gotten their own story, and this author has thought to talk about the backstory of these two characters, what could have possibly gone on to make them loathe each other so much, and of course fall back together. So this just seems like a really sweet novel, and I love Shakespeare, as you know, I love historical fiction, I'm bound to love this book. And thank you to Hodder for sending me this one, I can't wait to read and review it. The next book is a book that you will have heard of, no doubt about that. It is The Young Elites by Marie Lu. Marie Lu is the author of the Legend series, one of my favourite series ever. Like, I'm sure I've posted so many videos about the Legend series. That series broke my heart so many times, but it was amazing. Like, so good. So this is her new fantasy novel, and I can't wait for this novel. I actually don't know very much about what this book is about, but I've been meaning to read it for ages because Marie Lu's writing is so brilliant. So when I saw it there, just sitting in the bookshop, just looking so inviting with its beautiful cover, I had to pick it up. I mean, there wasn't any question in my mind that I wouldn't. So I'm really desperate to get to this really, really soon and I can't wait to read it. I've seen so much about it on booktube, so many brilliant reviews and excitement about it and I can't wait to get to this. The final book is now an award-winning book, and it is Only Ever Yours by Louise O'Neill. This has just won the YA Book Prize, which is a prize set up by the Bookseller magazine. I can't wait for this. I honestly, this sounds so creepy and so chilling, but also so fascinating. And of course, it's a prize winner now, so it must be good. I believe this is a dystopian novel set in a world where girls are basically kind of brought up for like the satisfaction and ownership of men, at least that's what I think it is. And the tagline of this says, choose a girl to own forever, and it's called Only Ever Yours. And it sounds really kind of dystopian and chilling, and I can't wait to get to this also. I think it'll be brilliant, and I've heard that it is really kind of messed up and a bit creepy, and yeah, it just sounds fascinating. So those were all the books that I picked up in March. I'm really excited to get to them. I mean, I still haven't gotten to the books that I hold in January or February, but I feel that that's fine, that's normal. If you've read any of these books, please do let me know which ones you've read and which ones you've liked, and let me know down in the comments. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time, guys. Bye!